Okay, so the recent BRICS summit in Kazan, you know, it's really got people talking. And it's easy to see why. It feels like, well, it feels like a turning point maybe in how global power is shifting. And we are going to dive deep today into what makes this summit so significant. Um, you know, look at the key themes and the potential fallout, I guess. Yeah. We've got a ton of stuff to work with, news articles, expert analyses, even some social media buzz. Right. Yeah. And I think it's it's really crucial to understand that BRICS, and that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, you know, that group represents a huge chunk of the world's population. And it's economic output, too. Can't forget that. And they've just brought in new members, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Ethiopia, and Iran. So it's really solidified their their presence, you know, on the world stage. Yeah, for sure. It's a really diverse group, though. Like each country has its own, you know, interests, priorities, all that. So what were they what were they hoping to achieve at this summit? Well, one of the main things was to, you know, project this image of unity, strength, you know, yeah. especially with all the pressure from the West. And of course, there's the whole backdrop of the war in Ukraine. This summit was a chance for these nations to well, to kind of get on the same page, you know, about global issues and also to, you know, see if there are other ways of doing things economically and politically. And Putin, you know, deciding to host it in Kazan. Yeah. Despite, well, everything that's going on, the ICC warrant, the West trying to isolate him, it all seems pretty deliberate. Oh, absolutely. The choice of Kazan. I mean, it's the capital of Tatarstan, which is a region in Russia. It's symbolic. It's strategic. Yeah. You know, it shows off like Russia's huge and has all this cultural diversity. But it's also, I think, a way of pushing back against the West. Yeah. And Time magazine, they said Putin shows the West that it's not isolated. I mean, that really says it all. OK, so let's let's talk about Putin's his whole diplomatic strategy at this summit. Yeah. His meetings with Xi Jinping and Modi, those seemed really important. Yeah, Putin, he's he's a really savvy player on the world stage, and he definitely used this summit to, well, to strengthen those bonds with, with key partners. His meetings with Xi Jinping and Modi, there were, you know, warm greetings, lots of talk about cooperation. Putin actually told Xi that, and I'm quoting here, their partnership is one of the main stabilizing factors in the world. And that, that really feeds into this idea of a, of a closer, like, Sino-Russian alliance, and that could have huge, huge ripple effects you know, globally. But Modi, he seemed, I don't know, like he was playing it a bit differently, like pushing for peace in Ukraine, but, you know, still keeping those strong ties with Russia. Right. Well, India is in kind of a tricky spot geopolitically. They've got these close ties with Russia, but they also value their relationship with the West. And they're keeping an eye on China with, you know, China's growing influence. So Modi calling for peace in Ukraine, it lets him, you know, stay on good terms with everybody. And it also positions India as a potential mediator you know speaking of you know challenging the west one of the the biggest things that came out of this summit was you know this idea that BRICS could like reshape the global order they're even thinking about creating a whole new payment system to rival swift can you can you break down what swift is and why why a BRICS alternative would be such a big deal yeah, so SWIFT, it stands for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. It's basically, uh, it's how international bank transfers happen, like the, the plumbing of the whole global financial system, you know. So a BRICS alternative, it would let countries do business without using U.S. dollars or, or relying on Western banks. And that could really weaken U.S. influence financially and give BRICS countries more, more control over their, their economies. So they're basically trying to create like a whole new financial system, one that could like totally change how, you know, global trade and investment works. It's a bold move. It could it could really change the rules of the game. But what about what about the dynamics within BRICS? Can a group with, you know, all these different interests and ideologies really act together? That that's the big question for BRICS. Like, how do they deal with their internal divisions? Some members like China, Russia and Iran they, they really want to challenge the West. But others, like India and Brazil, they're more focused on, you know, growing their economies and reforming, like, the existing global institutions. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky balance for sure. Absolutely. And, and the expansion of BRICS, it just makes things even more complicated. You've got new members like Saudi Arabia and the UAE. They have their own goals. And those goals might not always line up with, you know, the original members. So it's, it's like they're trying to walk this tightrope, you know. Between wanting a multipolar world and, and keeping everyone on the same page, could that could that tension actually make them less effective on the on the global stage? It's definitely a possibility, yeah. And we can't forget about, well, the big issue, the Ukraine war. It was I mean, it was a major topic at the summit. Modi even he offered India's help to try and get a truce. What what did Putin say about that? 
Well, Putin, you know, he acknowledged Modi's efforts, but he he didn't budge on his stance about Ukraine. He he made it clear Russia's not giving up any of the territory it's annexed right. and that, you know, Russia's security interests have got to be taken seriously. Actually, in the transcript of his speech, he said something about uh, needing to acknowledge the new geopolitical realities to get a long-term solution. Hmm. That's that's pretty strong. Sounds like this conflict is far from over. And, you know, the impact goes way beyond Ukraine itself. I mean, even in Kazan, they had the summit under tight security. There were reports of, like, Ukrainian drone attacks there recently. Yeah, holding the summit in Kazan, it, it takes on a whole new meaning when you consider those attacks. I mean, Kazan might be far from the actual fighting, but it's it's not immune to the, the effects of the war. Yeah. You know, it really shows how everything's connected globally mm -hmm. and how how far-reaching the consequences of conflict can be. Putin's meeting with the UAE president, Sheikh Mohammed, that, yeah. that also caught my eye. Wasn't there like some tension there about, about the war in Ukraine? Yeah, the UAE has been um, more neutral, I guess, on the Ukraine war. They've they've offered to to mediate between between Russia and Ukraine, and that's actually caused some friction with the U.S. You know, who's a close ally of the UAE. Putin, he he praised Jake Mohammed for for trying to mediate, but he also stressed that you know Russia's point of view has to be considered. So it's like the UAE, they want to stay on good terms with the West, but they've also got their own you know worries about stability in the region mm -hmm. and about. Iran's influence growing. Yeah, the UAE's kind of a, a microcosm of, of the bigger picture, you know, yeah. like all these these shifts that are happening geopolitically, old alliances are being tested and new partnerships are popping up. The the old world order with the U.S. in charge, it's it's facing challenges from, you know, rising powers like China right. and regional groups like BRICS. It's it's a wild time to be following global politics. So much uncertainty. Yeah. But but what does it all mean in the long run? How will this how will this affect you know, everyday people. Yeah, that's that's the big question, isn't it? Like, how will all this, all these geopolitical shifts, how will they actually affect, you know, the average person? It's tough to to say for sure what the future holds, but but there are a few, you know, possible scenarios. One one possibility is that that the world becomes more fragmented, you know, with different like economic and political blocks all all competing for influence, mm -hmm. and that could that could lead to more instability, more conflict. Okay, that that doesn't sound so great. Are there are there any other scenarios like where things turn out, you know, more cooperative, more peaceful? Oh yeah, definitely. Another possibility is that that we move towards a a more multipolar world, where power is you know more evenly distributed, and that could that could actually lead to more cooperation, more dialogue. But but it would require like a shift in thinking, moving away from this this zero sum mentality and and being willing to to find common ground, you know, on things like climate change, poverty, global health. So the future is not like set in stone. It depends on the choices that that these countries make and, and all of this really in the years to come. But but let's let's come back to the BRICS summit for a sec. We've talked about their goals, the challenges they face and and what could happen as a result of of what they do. What what else what else did we learn from this event? I think I think one of the key takeaways is that BRICS it's it's not just one big unified group. It's a mix of countries, each with their own you know, interests and priorities. They all want a more multipolar world, sure, but but they might have different ideas about how to get there. Yeah, that makes sense. It's important to remember that that each member brings something different to the table. We've we've focused a lot on Putin and Russia. But but what about the other BRICS nations? What are like their main concerns? What are they hoping to achieve? Well, China, for example, they're they're really focused on on expanding their influence. Economically and politically, globally, they're pouring money into infrastructure projects all over the world through their their Belt and Road Initiative, and they're they're pushing their own model of development, you know, as an alternative to to the Western model. And India, they seem to be like treading carefully, trying yeah. to to keep a good relationship with both Russia and the West. Right, India is in a in a tough spot. They have this this long partnership with Russia. But they're also, you know, watching China as yeah. China's power grows in the region. So they're they're trying to to find a way to to maintain their independence strategically while also, you know, looking out for their own economic and security interests. That's like every country is trying to figure out where they stand in this this new global landscape. And it's not just about, you know, governments and leaders. It's about, you know, individuals, civil society. How how can we like everyday people? How can we make sense of all this all this complexity? Right. And and how can we contribute to to a more peaceful, more just world? That's a that's a really important question. I think I think we can start by by staying informed, 
having you know thoughtful discussions about these issues and and holding our leaders accountable we can we can support organizations that are working for peace for justice for sustainable development and and we can make a conscious effort to to get our news and information from a, a variety of sources so we can get a, a more you know balanced and and nuanced view of of what's happening in the world it's a good reminder that we're not like just watching all this happen. We we have a role to play in shaping the future. Our choices, our actions, our voices, they all matter. So so what would you say like what's the most important thing for our listeners to take away from this this deep dive into the BRICS summit? I think I think the key takeaway is this. The world is changing and the old rules they don't apply anymore. We're we're moving into this this new era of multipolarity where power is more spread out and no one country or or group of countries can call all the shots and that that presents both challenges and and opportunities it's up to us to to navigate this new landscape you know yeah. with wisdom with courage and with a with a commitment to building a, a a more peaceful and prosperous future for everyone that's that's a great way to put it it's been it's been a really insightful journey exploring this BRICS summit and and what it means for for the global order we've we've learned about their ambitions their challenges the potential consequences and and we've been reminded that we all have a part to play in shaping the future even if our actions seem small so thank you for joining us on this deep dive we we hope you found it you know enlightening empowering until next time keep exploring keep questioning keep diving deep